And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Watch Dogs Legion. This is a strange and ambitious third Watch Dogs game that once again tries to kind of find out like a unique footing. The original Watch Dogs wasn't well received by many, but I liked it quite a bit. I'll admit it. Watch Dogs 2 tried injecting a bit more character and lightheartedness and a bit of goofiness, and I enjoyed that too. Legion tries something once again, but setting it in a near future London, and they designed it around no singular main character you play as. You recruit NPCs to your hacker cause and bounce around and build up a team, and it's interesting for sure. I'm a bit mixed on some of it so far, to be honest, but I give the game lots of points for just trying weird new ideas. Let's dive in though. So Watch Dogs Legion, like I said, takes place in London and you're essentially hackers in a dead sec hacker cell tasked with liberating London because it's under a tight grip of control by essentially a privatized security military force with high tech surveillance everywhere. So district by district, you've got to rally people to your cause, use their specific skills and take back neighborhoods from the bad guys. After a brief intro scene and a gameplay sequence, you're thrust right into the thick of it. You choose one random civilian to start with. I, I chose the first dude I could find that looked like a scuzzier Nico Bellic from Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, you find a dead sec base of operations in an abandoned tube station, and then you get to building up your roster, and the game gives you quite a bit of freedom on how you want to really pursue everything. Now, you're going to want to have a big stable full of characters because they all have their own unique stuff. Special perks, abilities, sometimes weapons, and even vehicles. All stuff you're gonna want to get your hands on. The way it kind of goes, most main characters, except for the jokey ones, are pretty capable all around, but characters of certain builds are just more suited for different situations. And for the most part, you're free to approach things however you really want. Mission areas typically have multiple entrances, uh, different levels of elevation, and then from there you can do your watchdogs thing. You know, either stealth creep around, hack cameras, use your little gadgets, drop a spider bot, maybe set some traps, cause a little technological chaos, or just go in guns blazing or punch everyone. Either way, most of the time, there isn't too much penalty to either, and the game gives you a good amount of freedom that's impressive in terms of scenario and level design, at least to me. Any way you play, it's pretty fun. Most areas, especially the main ones, seem, like I said, tightly designed to just make things interesting and make you think about how you play a little bit. Stealth is still relatively simple, which I usually don't like, but with the hacking stuff combined with that, it's fun. Different enemies bring different challenges sometimes too. Uh, the only thing is that after a while, I will say to me personally, it felt a little bit dull and some stuff felt repetitive by the time I saw a lot of encounters. Like for instance, I also just got really tired of like the hacking puzzles where you connect the lines and the floors and the walls and the ceilings, but I digress. There is fun variation on the characters themselves and how they affect play. That's really the name of the game here. Some characters will be more suited for action. You know, they might automatically come into your roster with cooler weapons or have some special perk or buff that helps them in combat. And if they're of like the Hitman designation, they can do cool John Wick style finishers, which make them just a ton of fun to play as, like the more combat oriented characters. Now, most people are at least hackers in some way and can distract an enemy by sending a notification to their phone, but more competent hacker specialized characters can like make a phone malfunction and stun an enemy or even do more types of disables and hacks while driving or just in the environment. Anyone can just hack a random flying construction zone that you can use as a platform to fly around on and get to high places, but only certain actual construction worker characters can summon one right to your location conveniently. Certain people that have a uniform for their job can get into places easier, like an Albion officer or a hospital worker. And there are even old people and street performers too. Uh, collecting characters, that whole thing is just straight up fun, not gonna lie. The better you get a district of the city, then specialized, more unique NPCs will pop up on the map and you can go recruit them specifically. Not only that, I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but like you can technically recruit 
anyone off the street. Uh, like the in typical Watch Dogs fashion, you can like use your phone to like hack them and look at their information. Just an NPC walking down the street, and you get a preview of their character build and what they could bring to the table. So then from there, you essentially walk up to them and trigger a randomized mission to help them out. You know, it's usually just some random thing. Get rid of some blackmail evidence or save them from a gang that took them hostage. It all just feels really kind of disconnected and a bit whatever, but then you get the character and whatever they have with them that they bring to the table, and that's always fun. It would still all feel a little meaningless if there wasn't any progression to it, but thankfully, there is some type of character advancement here. You know, you get access to a tech tree that is universal, and you spend points to get stuff like an invisible visibility cloak, a stun punch, more health, a more powerful spider bot, more drone hacking and disabling, stuff like that. Many of them also have tiers too to dump more points into, like, you know, you unlock a stun pistol for everyone, and then the next tier of unlock for that gives you a higher ammo capacity. The points you spend on this tech tree are typically found hidden in the world and in environments, and you gotta pick them up. Sometimes they're in interiors, sometimes they're exteriors, and some are easy, like just in an alleyway or on a roof, and sometimes they feel like finding a Riddler trophy in a Batman Arkham game where they're really tricky and you gotta use all your tools. Now, not only are you building a skill tree that helps everyone, but you can also customize each random NPC with whatever clothes, accessories, and items you find or buy in the world. There's a surprising amount of stuff and cosmetic stuff, and it can be pretty fun, I, I will say. You know, the game does a good job of blending goofiness with cool future stuff, which does remind me, I do wanna mention, my favorite thing about the game straight up is the world. We need more games set in London. We need more games like The Getaway, uh, but really, it's a fun and cool recreation and the near future stuff is really interesting and it kind of makes the whole watchdogs playground more overwhelming with opportunity than it ever really has been making people's cars go all over the place exploding stuff uh, dropping tons of drones from the sky even watching NPCs get into wacky weird confrontations on their own just means that there's always something kind of cool moving or going on in that kind of wacky janky open world way that's actually kind of fun where it's just happy accidents happen all the time uh, plus there are a few fun side diversions like uh, like mini games like kicking a ball around and doing tricks that I actually kind of got hooked on for a minute I wouldn't say that the game is like totally like a typical Ubisoft game where the map is just overloaded with distractions and things to do but there is quite a bit I think it's like a decent balance. Now challenge wise, most of the game is fairly easy if you pay attention, although I will say the Albion forces do hunt you down pretty relentlessly sometimes, and I was surprised by that and pretty into that. But I do gotta say, I made the mistake of not selecting permadeath mode at first. So for those of you that don't know, the game gives you the option to play the standard way, where you know if a character you have dies or something on a mission, then they get technically arrested or hospitalized and are like in a a cool down period and a timeout until you can use them again. Then there's also the permadeath mode where you lose your characters if they die straight up. Even the really good rare ones with the good perks, if they die, they die. Once I decided to play with this mode, the moment to moment gameplay got a little bit more interesting for me personally. Even though I thought some of the missions were dull, I just appreciated that the stakes were a bit higher. I'm glad the option is there either way. I think freedom of choice is good in games, uh, but first impressions wise, as I'm not finished with the game, I, I do say I recommend the permadeath mode if that's your type of thing. The NPC stuff is really creative and fun, but it kind of left me feeling detached from what was going on, you know? Granted, they really tried, it seems, but the plot moving forward and things going on didn't really connect with me. I wasn't super entertained by it. You know, there is a decent villain, but I just couldn't get interested in much of it at all. Maybe it has a bit to do with me not playing as a singular, actually written character, but I think they did the best they could with it. I really do. I, I just don't think I found the moment-to-moment -moment plot interesting itself and couple that with the occasional repetitive mission, I found myself just kind of going through the motions sometimes, you know, which isn't really the best thing in a game, but every time the game did something cool or unique, I kind of forgot about those issues and went back to having a positive, good, fun, open world time. So that mileage is going to vary from player to player. I can only guide you so far here. You know, I have two friends that got the game on launch. One is absolutely loving it. One is feeling a little bit meh on it. So 
that's how it is. Now, one thing that isn't up for debate is the state of the game, I think. I think it looks pretty decent. You know, there's good world detail. A little bit of pop in here and there, but nothing crazy. Uh, but there are a lot of glitches and weird awkwardness. I've had NPCs floating, uh, clipping through walls, weird messed up faces, and a few missions just completely crash on me. It, it feels like this one needed a little bit more time in the oven. Not to mention the fact that sometimes NPCs just look jacked up or weird or their voices feel weirdly off. You know, the technical issues are something I like to point out because I have a high tolerance, personally, for putting up with this stuff, but I know some players really can't stand the sight of some glitches and some problems, so be warned. So I pointed out the game's systems, quite a bit of things I like, a few things I'm not crazy about. These are just first impressions, of course, but I think you're gonna either really enjoy this one or despise it completely. Now, it feels a bit more unique than the standard Ubisoft fare, although there are some issues. I really want to give them points, like I said, for trying weird stuff. I think some elements of this game might bring a cult following. The people who do like it, who I've talked to so far, do really dig it. Honestly, I hope the Watch Dogs series just keeps taking this concept forward in the future and expands upon it, really. I chalk that up as a win. Even if it's awkward, it feels like Watch Dogs found a cool new angle that works for them, other than just open world game with hacking. Like, there's a bit more here. Watch Dogs 4, if carried in a similar direction and expanded upon, could be amazing. But, of course, guys, that's a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. There's a lot to talk about with this game, and I want to know what you guys are thinking, especially considering there are so many games and even upcoming consoles that are all competing for your time in the next coming months. So, let's talk. Now, of course, it's me, your old pal Jake Baldino, and I'm going to have a lot more before you buys coming for you. So, keep it peeled. If you enjoyed this, clicking the like button does help, and subscribing if you're new is a good idea, you know. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.